Welcome to the Agency Nation Radio Podcast, powered by Trusted Choice and the Big Eye. This is a special hard market bonus edition, working with carriers, featuring National Young Agents Council members. Welcome to Agency Nation Radio Podcast, where insurance professionals turn on the mic and share unscripted stories about leadership, technology, marketing, success, and failure stories that help make them the professionals they are today. Agency Nation Radio is presented by the Big Eye and Trusted Choice. Today's episode is part of the Young Agents Tactical Series, a special hard market bonus series brought to you by the National Young Agents Committee in conjunction with the Trusted Choice Hard Market Toolkit. I'm today's host, Cassandra Cagle, a member of the National Young Agents Committee and a commercial line sales executive at Eastern Insurance. I'm joined by two incredible guests, Adam Risman, a member of the Massachusetts Young Agents Committee from Risman Insurance, and Haley Meisner from Liberty Mutual, the Senior Vice President, and one of our platinum sponsors of the National Young Agents Program. Thank you so much for joining me for today's conversation. We know the hard market has impacted agents and carriers across the country. We wanted to take some time today to talk about the perspectives from the agent side the carrier side, and hear from both of you with today's current landscape in the marketplace. So Haley, for a first question for you, from the carrier side, what requirements have changed for new submissions as you navigate this hard market? Yes. Well, Cassandra, thank you for having me today. I'm thrilled to be here. Adam, great to meet you. Um, And this is such a hot topic. And I'm so glad we're discussing this right now, because I feel like every conversation I'm in, we're talking about the hard market. um, And truly, what all goes into that? And what is it doing to us on the carrier side to all of you as independent agents? Um, And we say the hard market right now, I don't even know if that captures everything going on. You know, we had record setting cap years from 2020 to 2023, probably more to come. Unfortunately, we all navigated COVID together. We now have the inflationary period, hard market, legal system abuse is I think the newest hot topic Um, we're seeing trial litigation um, and lawyers on more claims today than we ever have. And that is just doing nothing but trending up. So a lot of headwinds figuratively and literally in this industry right now. And so we're all doing the best we can to make sure we keep a reliable product in the market that can be, you know, serving your clients and our agents in the long term. So not a ton of new things for submissions, what I would say is they're either enhanced or have a spotlight on them right now. So when I think of what new requirements are out there, we've always had things like discount verifications, but right now you probably see them on every discount versus a subset of discounts. And uh, (laughs) you might see much harder terms around them and turnaround times. And we need to see the actual paper, not just the agent verifying it. Um, So when you think of document upload at time of submission to get to that bind, Um, pre-bind inspections, all of these different, I'll call them tools in the toolbox to ensure that we have accurate rate for the right risk. And right risk is really important, especially in commercial lines right now. Having eyes on what that risk is, how it's evolved, exactly what they do. As we all know, business is complex. Commercial insurance is complex. A simple business, what used to be a simple business, now has many tentacles. I think we all learned that together during COVID. A restaurant was a restaurant. Now they all do carry out and delivery on DoorDash. And what does that mean for my liability and other other coverages? We all learned that on the fly together. So when I think about new requirements, it all comes back to relying on third-party data, relying on verification, minimizing that leakage. And then again, at renewal, how does that, how has that risk changed over the last 12 months? So it all is about getting to that ground truth of the risk. And to me, that's the value of the independent agent. You all have the relationship with the client. You have the means and the ability to get that information and that intel. And so that's where that partnership and ensuring that you understand our appetite, our systems, and how to do business together is so, so critically important. So it's funny you mentioned that, Haley, um, because that was actually kind of leading me into one of my other questions that I had for you. So I know that you're saying nothing is new. Nothing's really different that you're expecting from the agents. But do, do you expect any different type of communications from your agents as far as with the pre-submission process or anything like that? 
Yeah. And I feel like I'm not doing it justice saying nothing's new. A ton is new. It's more, we're not writing business in a profoundly different way. It's just the little, little details that we're all honed in on now is, is definitely the new part. When we think, or when I think of communications, um, again, I go to commercial lines, that partnership with your underwriter, it's always been important. Holy cow. Hopefully I'm allowed to say, holy cow. It is important right now. Um, the partnership of understanding what the agents focused on from the carrier side, from a carrier side, you know, in, from the agent's perspective, they need to rely on that underwriter to make sure they're up to speed with where's the appetite, how's it evolving? Cause it's evolving a lot right now. Um, certain geographies, certain complex States are seeing, you know, even extra hard markets. Carriers are entering and exiting their willingness to write new business. I feel like on a daily basis, I see headlines. Um, so for us at Liberty Mutual, our goal is to avoid ever having to exit a new business, you know, a new business shutdown. We are taking all of the extra precautions we need to, to ensure that we have a remaining product and market for our agents to partner and rely on. And that's really, really important to us. Um, but what does that mean in return? That means we are verifying every single discount that we're applying. We're doing extra verification uh, pre-bind. Um, so once we see that quote, what extra verification are we doing now that we probably were comfortable bypassing before. In the commercial line space, that means more manual underwriting. It's a more expensive way of doing business, but right now it's that is expense that is worth it. Um, given we have to, again, understand truly what we are writing and putting on the books. But at the end of the day, I've been, again, so pleased with seeing the partnership between the carrier and the agencies, at least from our perspective, because agents understand now more than ever, these extra steps mean that I have a long-term viable product that is remaining in market that I can can trust and rely on. So again, our goal, you know, Liberty Mutual, we're not thinking short term next year, next two years. We are thinking long, long term. We are the number two carrier today in the independent agent space. Our carriers trust and rely on us day in and day out. So we're looking at what do we do now to ensure 20 years from now, that product is not only status quo, but it is even beyond as we have aspirations to be the number one carrier champion and carrier in the independent agency channel. So everything we do now, a lot of it seems like tedious steps, but it's to ensure that we have a long-term reliable and relevant product in market. So that communication, it all comes back to your territory manager, your underwriter in that partnership that is local. And I, I love talking about this because it's so, so important. During COVID, a ton of carriers kind of pulled back on travel. Um, you know, we remain out in the field. We remain present to our agents. I think, Cassandra, you were just telling me earlier, you had lunch with your TM, your Liberty Mutual TM, uh, just earlier this week. We have to be present and local, but we balance that with our national presence. So what can we do with the scale we have in the national presence to support the channel while also remaining local and in the backyards of our independent agents? So that communication and that partnership now, again, it, more important than ever. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and thank you for sharing all of that. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, so now we're going to get the flip side. So Adam, um, with you being on the agency side over at Risman Insurance, um, a couple questions for you now. Um, first question, what would you say is the most disruptive changes that you've seen in the marketplace um, from, from all of your carriers, not just Liberty? Um, you know, obviously we do love Liberty, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking all of them, not, not just Liberty. Yep, definitely. First of all, thank you for having me on, Cassandra and Haley. Uh, great to meet you and great points. Um, I think she covered a lot of it. It's kind of similar on our side as well. Um, the first thing is obviously pricing. We've seen it's no secret. Pricing has gone up pretty drastically. Um, I actually joined the industry about four and a half years ago. So uh, in the last four years, I, I feel like I've seen it all you could possibly dream of in this industry. Um, so between COVID, between supply chain, between everything else happening, um, not only insurance, but everything in price has gone up in the last few years. Um, so really just, I mean, again, like Haley, he said over communicating with both the carrier side as well as the customer side, being able to really put in perspective, we're not just doing your renewal and, and raising it 15% because we want to make more money or we want to, you know, wreak havoc in your life. Um, unfortunately, that's just kind of how the market's going. It's how these carriers can take on different risks. And it's really, it's been obviously increasing the prices. Um, and aside from that, again, kind of what Haley said, we're getting 
emails we're, get, we're having discussions with the carrier side saying they have to shrink their appetite between on the residential side different areas they might be leaving a county or leaving a whole state um, and then on the risk side you know on the commercial side you might be tightening up on what types of risks you want to take on between size of companies between again location geographic things um, so it's really been obviously difficult but on the flip side of how to combat that is Again, over communicate with the carriers, being able to, you know, have lunches or have a coffee with um, your marketing rep or with the underwriters and just say, what do you want to write essentially? Um, and they're pretty straightforward, which is awesome. I mean, having a good relationship with the marketing reps and with the underwriters and saying, you know, in March of 2024, what do you want? There's no point in shopping it out. You know, we, we don't like that term, but going to four or five different carriers and three of them say, hey, we actually no longer write this or it's not part of our appetite. We can't compete. That that causes problems for us when everyone's obviously short staffed and, and things are taking a little bit longer. Um, and on the client, you don't want to go back to them and say, hey, sorry, I made four or five calls today and no one wants this as a risk. It, it doesn't make anyone feel good. So um, I think just really over communicating in, the, in these hard times has been really important. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm on the commercial line side, as I said earlier, and I have the exact same conversations that that, that you just mentioned. Um, and to kind of piggyback off of that, so Haley had mentioned about the the pre submission process with them. What would you say from the agency side, in in your you know personal experience, where have you found the most success in adapting with your submission to meet those carriers' newer expectations that you know maybe they didn't have when you first started out four years ago? Yeah, I think it's really adapting every day for whether we like it or not. Um, I think really getting to know your I mean, I'll go on the commercial side because that's where I spend most of my time getting to know, digging deeper with clients, not just saying, you know, let me look at last year's policies and loss runs and present it to four or five carriers and hope to get lucky and get good pricing. Really digging into companies, meeting with the business owners, meeting with, you know, those that are on the road or I do a lot in the construction and contractor industry, um, really getting to know how they've transformed as a company over the last few years. Like Haley said, have you added services? Have you uh, adapted and kind of changed in these different times? Um, and how do we really present that to the carrier rather than, hey, I'm an I'm a insurance salesman. I'm going to go out to these companies and sell them insurance. Obviously, that's not what we do. I don't, I don't have to tell you to. Um, really, what I want to do is be a salesperson for those clients we have, or those prospects, and say, hey, I want to get to know the ins and outs of the business. I want to get to know what's important to you and how to really um, paint a picture of that client to the carriers with explaining losses, explaining growth, explaining, you know, why you've had to add or subtract to your, um, your staff. It's really just all getting every aspect of the business and presenting it to, you know, the carriers and saying, this is why we believe they're a good risk is really more important than ever. Um, I always say, you know, shopping out is kind of dead. Um, there's no longer you reach out to four or five agents say, here are my deck pages, you know, go find me the best, uh, the best option. Cause first of all, you're going to get four or five agents that, completely, you know, they look at you as a completely different company from their eyes. They'll present you differently to every carrier. And then obviously Haley can tell us every carrier has a much different appetite right now. So you're going to get four or five completely different proposals. And it really just puts the the business owners in a bad spot because they have no idea, do I go for the lowest price? Do I go for the most coverage? What kind of what's happening here? So I think it's more important on us to over communicate with both sides and really just paint that picture for them, both for the customer as well as for the uh, carrier, you know, what we really need to get accomplished. Again, couldn't agree more with that. Um, so final question for the both of you. Um, Talk, talk to me a little bit about the importance of working with each other rather than against each other. You know, working as the carrier side, working with the agent, the agent working with the carrier, uh, because let's be honest, it is something that we have to adapt to right now in the current landscape, you know, within the marketplace that we're at. So if, if you don't mind just giving me your take on that. I would love to. Adam, I'm going to try to not take an hour to answer this question because I'm <laughs> so passionate about it. Um, so cut me off when you need to. But it is so, so important. At the end of the day, we will either both lose or we will both win. So to take this journey 
um, in, as a one-way road and not work together, it, it, that will end up in a failure. So we as carriers rely on independent agents, not only for distribution, but more importantly, client education and making sure that we have well-rounded out coverage for every single risk coming in the door. Agents rely on carriers for placement. Um, they are the supplier of the, at, at the end of the day, uh, the underwriting paper. So it's so important that we realize that reliance on one another and we're partnering to win together and get out of this successfully. Um, I'd say right now, the biggest thing, we're talking a lot about communication. Communication is one thing, but what is in that communication? Education is key right now. We always are throwing around the word hard market, but what really does that mean? And how do we inform and educate business owners and even down to you know individual policyholders? Simple single car policy. When that comes up for renewal, I can remember when I started my career, it, we were reshopping renewals that were going up 5%. If it wasn't going down, <laughs> I'm not satisfied as a consumer. Um, so it's so critical right now for customers, clients, business owners, whoever it is to understand when you're seeing rate increases, why that's an expectation right now, unfortunately, what that means and how you should handle that, rely on your independent agent and have the IA guide you through that transaction. We as carriers have to help the agent in that transaction. A great example of that, um, Liberty launched a Manage by Renewal tool for all of our agents. So if the both of you haven't used it, it is personal lines only right now. So if you don't touch personal, you probably have not used it. But for the personal lines agents listening, it's a phenomenal tool. What we're doing is putting in layman's terms at your fingertips. What is changing as far as price with this policy at the upcoming renewal? why so you can easily just tell the client and it summarizes it in such a great way and what the agent can do about it so yes this rate's going up 18 percent help to combat that here look at telematics enrollment look at paperless look at you know i could go on and on with the discounts we offer so it not only brings the clarity and transparency to that renewal interaction but it puts really the ownership to take action in the agent's hand at the tip of their at, at the tips of their fingers. Um, so that's just one example of ways that carriers have to understand what agents are going through right now, put the tools and insights at their fingertips. Because again, the better you retain your book, the better we retain our book, we all win. The better you can, you know, help clients understand and stick with you through this, the better for us. So it really has to be a partnership at the end of the day. Adam, would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, you're a hard act to follow. I guess I can't just say same <laughs> or else that would make it this a really short uh, show. So no, I, I completely agree with what you said. And I, I don't mean to keep being repetitive. But, um, you know, I think as an agent, I mean, obviously, insurance is viewed, you look at the, you know, the TV commercials all the time with the direct writers, and people kind of just get an idea of what insurance is through that. But essentially, we're the middleman. I mean, we have to represent both sides as well as we possibly can. When we're talking to the carriers. We want to make sure we have an understanding of what is your appetite right now. We get it to hard market. They're going to take out certain appetite. They're going to take out certain areas. And obviously, there'll be some places they just may not be competitive. Um, so really, what we want to do is we want to get an idea of what exactly do you want to write again in, in March of 2024, where are the areas we can target you? When I go out and talk to people, I can say, we have someone that's going to represent you very well. And then hopefully if, if that's something you have an appetite for, we want to actually give you the business. Obviously that's how success happens. So um, I think just right now, again, I mean, there's no more spray and pray. There's no more, again, shop it out to the whole market and really see what comes back. You have to be in constant contact with your carriers, with your marketing reps, with everyone on that side, and really just having a good picture of when I go out and I talk to you know, these contractors, these condo owners, whatever else it is, how can I be the most competitive and how can I put this client in the, the best position where I know they're going to be protected? So, um, and then obviously on the client side, when we go out and we talk to these people, we want to do a full risk assessment. We want to learn more about their business and dig in. Um, and we want to be able to say, I know your business well enough where I can sell you to these, these carriers, put you in the best position and make sure that, you know, in, in this year and five years from now, you're best set to grow or achieve whatever you want in your business and not have to worry about obviously risk kind of derailing that. So, um, you know, I think it, it's just so important to have that mutual understanding and to be able to make it a seamless process, but without over communicating, without learning and, and educating ourselves on both sides, um, it just won't happen. So, so. Thank you to, to Haley and your team. Obviously, you've been great to us. And um, just, again, the education we get is really crucial. 
And Haley, the only request that I have is that incredible program you were talking about for personal lines. If you want to recommend that for commercial lines, Adam and I would would totally use it. <laughs> yeah. Cassandra, that may or may not be in the pipeline. So more to come there. But again, those are all the ways um, we're, we're really trying to partner right now. And the most important thing I'll share with you, all of these tools are born out of agent feedback. So we have agency councils, everything you share with your territory reps. So the biggest ask I would give to all of the agents listening, use your voice and share what you need to help your you and your agency be successful during this time. I can only speak for Liberty, but I know we have some great carriers across the board. Your carriers will listen and we have to do, again, whatever leads us to all winning and coming out of this successful. So I'm, I'm really proud to share that's one tool that came from agent feedback and there's many, many more to come. So make sure you're using your voices. Wonderful. That's the, I mean, if that's not the best way to end this series, then I don't know what is. So thank you both so much for being on this episode. And thank you for everyone listening, tuning into this edition of the Agency Nation Radio, again, powered by the Big Eye National Young Agents Committee and Trusted Choice. Make sure to download the Trusted Choice Hard Market Toolkit, which is available to all Big Eye members at trustedchoice.independentagent.com. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us five stars. I mean, why would you not? Um, Or leave us a review. And if you have a story for Agency Nation Radio, contact contact us at hello at agencynation.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Cassandra. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. The content of this podcast does not necessarily reflect the views of Trusted Choice or its affiliates. It's intended for general informational purposes only. Trusted Choice and its affiliates shall not be held responsible for and specifically disclaim any liability relating to this video. Trusted Choice does not guarantee the accuracy or completeness of any information contained herein. This video is not intended to be and should not be considered investment, financial, legal, or other professional advice. If such advice is required or desired, the services of an appropriate, competent professional should be sought.